How do you approach database queries in a read-only scenario in your use cases while also solving the problem of code duplication? In other words, how would you make these queries reusable inside of your application? That's what I'm going to discuss in today's video. Let me start by explaining the problem that I'm trying to solve. You can see the follower created domain event handler here, and it's using the iNotification service to publish a notification to the followed user that they have gained a new follower. So what I want to do is to update this method to also include the name of the user that started following the followed user. And I'm going to use the name to write a message like this saying that the user with this name started following you. So the next thing I need to do is to obtain the name of this user. I can do that by using the user identifier that I have on my domain event. And now I just need a way to query the database. So let me show you an example that I don't like. So you can see what I think are the problems with this approach. I'm going to use the user repository. I'm not going to inject it from the constructor because I'm just going to use this as an example. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say user as a variable is going to be the user repository and I'm going to call the getById async method. I'm going to pass the user identifier to this method and I expect to get back a user instance. Now the user could be nullable. So let's say if the user is null, I can throw some sort of exception. Let's say I want to throw a new application exception and I'm going to say the user is null. And in the other case, if the user is not null, I'm going to use the name that is available on the user object. And now I can properly format the message for my notification. Now, the problem that I see with this approach is that I only need the user in a read-only scenario, and I really only need the user identifier so that I know that this is the user that I'm looking for and the actual name of the user for my notification. But if I go to my implementation of the user repository, this is actually going to query the database and return back the entire user instance with all of the columns inside. Moreover, it's also going to add the user to the change tracker because this isn't a no tracking query. So you could try to solve this by exposing another method here that's going to return a user which isn't tracked by the database context or an even dirtier implementation by passing in some sort of flag like should track and then determining if you should call as no tracking or not. I think both of those approaches are terrible. First of all, because this is a domain repository and it should only work with domain entities. And what I really need is some sort of DTO that only contains the user identifier and the user name. So let's scratch this implementation because it's going to query more columns from the database than we need. And it's going to track the user in the EF core change tracker, which is something that we do not need in this context. So I'm going to create a simple record here and I'm going to call it user DTO and it's just going to have an identifier and the string for the user's name. And I'm going to use an alternative approach to query the user DTO from the database. And let me show you an example by using EF core. Only this time I'm going to use the database context to do it. So let's say I inject this from the constructor because I want to use this implementation and my user DTO instance, I'm going to get by saying DB context users and then I'm going to say where the user's ID is equal to the one that I have on my domain event. And now I need to project this to a user DTO. So I'm going to say new user DTO, give me the user's ID and the value of the name. And I can say, for example, single async. This is going to take care of throwing an exception if the user is null. I can also pass in the cancellation token here and I'm going to use the user DTO to access my name instance. The benefit is that because I'm using projections by calling select and returning a DTO, this is now a no tracking query and I'm getting a performance benefit because nothing is tracked inside of the EF core change tracker. And the minor issue I have with this approach is the potential of code duplication inside of my application layer. So whenever I need a user DTO, 
I would have to write this query manually to obtain a user DTO instance, and this is something that I don't want to do. So let's say I create a helper class here that I will call the user query. So let's start by making this a static class, and I'm going to define an extension method inside. It's going to return a user DTO, and it's going to be actually an asynchronous query returning a user DTO, and let's call it the get user DTO async. It'll need the user's identifier and a cancellation token. And the actual reason I made this a static class is so that I could make this an extension method. And what I can do is make it an extension method on the iApplication DB context interface. Of course, I also need to make this a static method so that it can be an extension method. And then for my implementation, I can just copy what I have here and paste it. So I'll make this asynchronous and I'm going to paste the implementation from above. Let me adjust the names of the variables and arguments and now this should compile. So now I move my query into a simple EF core extension method and I can go ahead and use it above by just calling the extension method. So I'll say get user DTO async. I can pass it the user identifier and the cancellation token. And now I have a way to obtain a user DTO instance by calling an extension method. This is reusable throughout my application layer. And I also have the benefit of performance because I'm using a no tracking query and projecting back to a user DTO. And another way you could implement this is without the help of EF core and using Dapper. So let me show you what that implementation would look like. I'm going to scrap this completely. I'll call this the get by ID async and it will no longer be an extension method. It's just going to be a static method. It's going to need an IDB connection instance so that I can write my Dapper query directly here. And here's what the query will look like. So I'll say await connection and I'll call the query single async method. I'm going to pass it my SQL. So I'll say select me the ID and the name columns from the user's table in the database where the ID of the user is equal to the user ID parameter. And now I'm just going to pass in my parameter instance using the ID argument of this method. So a fairly simple Dapper query, and I'm going to use it in the handle method of the domain event handler. So I'm going to scrap this here. I'll say await user queries and call the get by the async method and pass it the user identifier. And I need to also pass it the connection. So I don't have a connection instance yet. So I'm going to obtain it using the IDB connection factory. This is a simple interface with a single method on it, which is the create open connection method. And the implementation of this is inside of my infrastructure layer. It's just going to use my connection string to open up a new SQL connection to the SQL server database. It's going to open the connection and return it from this method. So if I go back to my event handler, I'm going to inject this from the constructor. Let me clean up the unused arguments here. And now I can use my DB connection factory to obtain a SQL connection instance. So I'm going to say using IDB connection, I'll call it connection, and I'm going to call the DB connection factory and create a connection instance. So now I have this intermediate step of obtaining a database connection before I can call my helper method, which is going to use Dapper to give me back the required user DTO. However, the benefit of this approach is excellent performance because Dapper is generally more performant than EF Core and has no notion of change tracking whatsoever. So let me clean up the implementation slightly by just moving around these files before we test out if this implementation is working. So I'm going to move the user DTO under the users feature folder and I'm also going to move the user queries under the users feature folder. So now the user queries class becomes the public interface of my users feature folder and it's going to allow me to share the user information with other use cases in my application layer. So if I go ahead and run the application now and send a post request to my API, it's going to execute my use case and trigger my domain event handler. So if I hit send 
I'm going to hit my breakpoint in the follower created domain event handler, which is going to create a database connection and then execute my database query using Dapper and the helper method that I wrote inside of the user queries class. And we're going to get back a user DTO instance containing the user identifier and the name that I'm going to use inside of the message of the notification that I'm going to send to the user. So I'm going to execute this and we're going to complete the handle method. So this is one approach how you could implement reusable queries in a read only scenario, such as your event handlers, when you're triggering side effects in external systems. Let me know in the comments which of the free approaches that I showed you here would you choose. And if you want to find out how to use both EF Core and Dapper efficiently, take a look at this video next where I'm explaining this topic in depth. Thanks for watching, make sure to smash the like and subscribe buttons, and until next time, stay awesome.